Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare Act 1 Scene 1 A public place Enter Samson and Gregory armed with swords and bucklers. Samson. Gregory. On my word. We'll not carry coals. Gregory. No. For then we should be colliers. Samson. I mean. If we be in collar, we'll draw. Gregory. A. While you live, draw your neck out by the collar. Samson. I strike quickly, being moved. Gregory. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. Samson. A dog of the house of Montague moves me. Gregory. To move is to stir. And to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. Samson. A dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montagues. Gregory. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. Samson. True. And therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore I will push Montague's men from the wall, and thrust his maids to the wall. Gregory. The quarrel is between our masters and us their men. Samson. Tis all one. I will show myself a tyrant. When I have fought with the men I will be civil with the maids. I will cut off their heads. Gregory. The heads of the maids. Samson. A. The heads of the maids, or their maiden heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. Gregory. They must take it in sense that feel it. Samson. Me they shall feel while I am able to stand. And, tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. Gregory. Tis well thou art not fish. If thou hadst, thou hadst been poor John. Draw thy tool. Here comes of the house of Montagues. Enter Abram and Balthazar. Samson. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel. I will back thee. Gregory. How? Turn thy back and run. Samson. Fear me not. Gregory. No. Marry. I fear thee. Samson. Let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. Gregory. I will frown as I pass by, and let them take it as they list. Samson. Nay. As they dare. 
I will bite my thumb at him, which is disgrace to them if they bear it. Abram. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Samson. I do bite my thumb, sir. Abram. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Samson. Is the law of our side if I say a? Gregory. No. Samson. No sir. I do not bite my thumb at you, sir. But I bite my thumb, sir. Gregory. Do you quarrel, sir? Abram. Quarrel, sir. No, sir. Samson. But if you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. Abram. No better. Samson. Well, sir. Enter Benvolio. Gregory. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Samson. Yes. Better. Sir. Abram. You lie. Samson. Draw. If you be men. Gregory. Remember thy washing blow. They fight. B E N V O L I O. Part. Fools. Put up your swords. You know not what you do. Beats down their swords. Enter Tybalt. Tybalt. What? Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee Benvolio. Look upon thy death. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. I do but keep the peace, put up thy sword, or manage it to part these men with me. Tybalt. What? Drawn. And talk of peace. I hate the word as I hate hell. All Montagues, and thee, have at thee, coward. They fight. Enter three or four citizens with clubs. First citizen. Clubs, bills and partisans. Strike. Beat him down. Down with the Capulets. Down with the Montagues. Enter Capulet in his gown, and Lady Capulet. Capulet. What noise is this? Give me my long sword. Ho. Lady Capulet. A crutch. A crutch. Why call you for a sword? Capulet. My sword. I say. Old Montague is come. 
and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Enter Montague and his lady Montague. Montague, thou villain Capulet. Hold me not. Let me go. Lady Montague, thou shalt not stir one foot to seek a foe. Enter Prince Aeschylus, with attendants. Prince. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor stained steel. Will they not hear? What? Ho. You men. You beasts, that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture, from those bloody hands throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word. By thee, old Capulet, and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets, and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by the grave beseeming ornaments, to wield old partisans, in hands as old, cankered with peace, to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives shall pay the forfeit of the peace. For this time all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me. And Montague, come you this afternoon, to know our father pleasure in this case. To old free town. Our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Exeunt prince and attendants. Capulet, Lady Capulet, Tybalt, citizens and servants. Montague. Who set this ancient quarrel new abroach? Speak. Nephew, were you by when it began? B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Here were the servants of your adversary and yours, close fighting ere I did approach. I drew to part them. In the instant came the fiery Tybalt, with his sword prepared, which, as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head, and cut the winds, who nothing hurt withal, hissed him in scorn. While we were interchanging thrusts and blows came more and more and fought on part and part, till the prince came, who parted either part. Lady Montague. Oh where is Romeo, saw you him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. Madam, an hour before the worshipped sun peered forth the golden window of the east. A troubled mind drave me to walk abroad, where underneath the grove of sycamore that westward rooteth from this city side. So early walking did I see your son. Towards him I made, but he was ware of me and stole into the covert of the wood. 
I, measuring his affections by my own, which then most sought where most might not be found, being one too many by my weary self, pursued my humor, not pursuing his, and gladly shunned who gladly fled from me. Montague, many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning's dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs, but all so soon as the all-cheering sun should in the farthest east begin to draw the shady curtains from Aurora's bed, away from light steals home my heavy sun and private in his chamber pens himself, shuts up his windows, locks fair daylight out and makes himself an artificial night. Black and portentous must this humor prove, unless good counsel may the cause remove. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O my noble uncle, do you know the cause? Montague, I neither know it nor can learn of him. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Have you importuned him by any means? Montague, both by myself and many other friends. But he, his own affection's counsellor, is to himself I will not say how true but to himself so secret and so close, so far from sounding and discovery, as is the bud bit with an envious worm ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air, or dedicate his beauty to the sun. Could we but learn from whence his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cure as no. Enter Romeo. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -E See, where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know his grievance or be much denied. Montague, I would thou wert so happy by thy stay to hear true shrift. Come, madam, let's away. Exeunt Montague and Lady Montague. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Good morrow, cousin. Romeo, is the day so young? B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O, -O, but new struck nine. Romeo, Amy, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went hence so fast? B E N V O L I O. It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Romeo. Not having that which, having, makes them short. B E N V O L I O. In love. Romeo. Out. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O, of love. Romeo. Out of her favor where I am in love. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Alas that love so gentle in his view, should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Romeo. 
alas that love, whose view is muffled still, should, without eyes, see pathways to his will. Where shall we dine? O oh me! What fray was here? Yet tell me not, for I have heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Why, then, O oh brawling love! O oh loving hate! O oh anything, of nothing first create! O oh heavy lightness! Serious vanity! Misshapen chaos of well-seeming forms. Feather of lead, bright smoke, cold fire, sick health. Still waking sleep, that is not what it is. This love feel I, that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? B E N V O L I A O. No cause, I rather weep. Romeo, good heart, at what? B E N V O L I A O. At thy good heart's oppression. Romeo, why such is love's transgression? Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed with more of thine. This love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Love is a smoke made with the fume of sighs. Being purged, a fire sparkling in lover's eyes. Being vexed, a sea nourished with lover's tears. What is it else? A madness most discreet, a choking bull, and a preserving sweet. Farewell. My cause. Going. B E N V O L I O. Soft. I will go along. And if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Romeo. Tut. I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo. He's some other where. B E N V O L I O. Tell me in sadness who is that you love? Romeo. What? Shall I groan and tell thee? B E N V O L I O. Crone. Why? No. But sadly tell me who. Romeo. Bid a sick man in sadness make his will. A word ill ergered to one that is so ill. In sadness, cousin. I do love a woman. B E N V O L I O. I aimed so near when I supposed you loved. Romeo. A right good markman, and she's fair I love. B E N V O L I O. 
a right fair mark, fair cause, is soonest hit. Romeo. Well, in that hit you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity well armed. From love's weak childish bow she lives uncharmed. She will not stay the siege of loving terms nor bide ten counter of assailing eyes. Nor ope her lap to scent seducing gold. Oh she's rich in beauty. Only poor that when she dies. With beauty dies her store. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste. Romeo. She hath. And in that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity. Cuts beauty off from all posterity. She is too fair. Too wise. Wisely too fair. To merit bliss by making me despair. She hath forsworn to love. And in that vow do I live dead, that live to tell it now. B -E -N -V -O -L -I -O. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Romeo. Oh teach me how I should forget to think. B -E -N -V -O -L -I -O. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Romeo. Tis the way to call hers, exquisite, in question more. These happy masks that kiss fair ladies' brows, being black, puts us in mind they hide the fair. He that is struck and blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve but as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. B -E -N -V -O -L -I -O. I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. Exeunt. Scene 2. A street. Enter Capulet, Paris and Servant. Capulet. But Montague is bound as well as I. In penalty alike. And. Tis not hard. I think. For men so old as we to keep the peace. Paris. Of honorable reckoning are you both. And pity. Tis you lived at odds so long. But now my lord, what say you to my suit? Capulet, but saying o'er what I have said before. My child is yet a stranger in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers with her in their pride ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Paris. Younger than she a happy mother's maid. Capulet. And too soon marred are those so early made. The earth hath swallowed all my hopes but she. She is the hopeful lady of my earth.
but woo her. Gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part. And she agree. Within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair according voice. This night I hold an old accustomed feast. Whereto I have invited many a guest. Such as I love. And you among the store. One more. Most welcome. Makes my number more. At my poor house look to behold this night earth treading stars that make dark heaven light. Such comfort as the lusty young men feel when well apparelled April on the heel of limping winter. Treads. Even such delight among fresh female buds shall you this night inherit at my house. Hear all. All see. And like her most whose merit most shall be. Which. On more view of many. Mine, being one, may stand in number, though in reckoning none. Come, go with me. Go, sirrah, trudge about through fair Verona. Find those persons out whose names are written there. Gives a paper and to them say. My house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Exeunt Capulet and Paris. Servant. Find him out whose names are written here. It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the tailor with his last. The fisher with his pencil. And the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are here writ. And can never find what names the writing person hath here writ. I must to the learned. In good time. Enter Benvolio and Romeo. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. Tut. Man. One fire burns out another's burning. One pain is lessened by another's anguish. Turn giddy. And be holp by backward turning. One desperate grief cures with another's languish. Take thou some new infection to thy eye, and the rank poison of the old will die. Romeo, your plantain leaf is excellent for that. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. For what? I pray thee. Romeo. For your broken shin. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. Why? Romeo. Art thou mad? Romeo. Not mad. But bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison. Kept without my food. Whipped and tormented and God den. Good fellow. Servant. God G.I. Go then. I pray. Sir. Can you read? Romeo. A. Mine own fortune in my misery. Servant. Perhaps you have learned it without book. But I pray. Can you read anything you see? Romeo. A. 
if I know the letters and the language. Servant Ye say honestly. Rest you merry. Romeo. Stay. Fellow. I can read. He reads the letter. Signor Martino and his wife and daughters. County Anselmo and his beauteous sisters. The Lady Widow of Utruvio. Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces. Mercutio and his brother Valentine. Mine uncle Capulet. His wife. And daughters. My fair niece Rosalind and Livia. Signor Valencio and his cousin Tybalt. Lucio and the lively Helena. A fair assembly. Gives back the paper whither should they come? Servant. Up. Romeo. Whither to supper? Servant. To our house. Romeo. Whose house? Servant. My master's. Romeo. Indeed I should have asked you that before. Servant. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet. And if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. Exit. B E N V O L I O. At this same ancient feast of Capulet's sups the fair Rosalind whom thou so loves it. With all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither and with unattainted eye. Compare her face with some that I shall show. And I will make thee think thy swan a crow. Romeo. When the devout religion of mine eye maintains such falsehood, then turn tears to fire. And these who, often drowned, could never die, transparent heretics, be burnt for liars. One fairer than my love. The all-seeing sun ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. Tut. You saw her fair, none else being by. Herself poised with herself in either eye. But in that crystal scales let there be weighed your lady's love against some other maid that I. We'll show you shining at this feast. And she shall scant show well that now shows best. Romeo. I'll go along. No such sight to be shown. But to rejoice in splendor of my own. Exeunt. Scene 3. Room in Capulet's house. Enter Lady Capulet and Nurse. Lady Capulet. Nurse. Where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Nurse. 
Now, by my maidenhead, at twelve year old, I bade her come. What? Lamb. What ladybird? God forbid. Where's this girl? What? Juliet. Enter Juliet. Juliet. How now? Who calls? Nurse. Your mother. Juliet. Madam. I am here. What is your will? Lady Capulet. This is the matter. Nurse. Give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Nurse. Come back again. I have remembered me. Thou's hear our counsel. Thou knowest my daughters of a pretty age. Nurse. Faith. I can tell her age unto an hour. Lady Capulet. She's not fourteen. Nurse. I'll lay fourteen of my teeth. And yet, to my teen be it spoken. I have but four. She is not fourteen. How long is it now to Lammas Tide? Lady Capulet. A fortnight and odd days. Nurse. Even or odd, of all days in the year, come Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. Susan and she. God rest all Christian souls. Were of an age. Well, Susan is with God. She was too good for me. But as I said, on Lammas Eve at night shall she be fourteen. That shall she marry. I remember it well. Tis since the earthquake now eleven years. And she was weaned. I never shall forget it. Of all the days of the year. Upon that day. For I had then laid wormwood to my dug. Sitting in the sun under the dove house wall. My lord and you were then at Mantover. Nay. I do bear a brain. But as I said, when it did taste the wormwood on the nipple of my dug and felt it bitter. Pretty fool, to see it tetchy, and fall out with the dug. Shake, quoth the dove house, twas no need, I trow, to bid me trudge. And since that time it is eleven years. For then she could stand alone. Nay, by truth she could have run and waddled all about. For even the day before she broke her brow. And then my husband. God be with his soul. I was a merry man. Took up the child. Yea, quoth he. Dost thou fall upon thy face? Thou wilt fall backward when thou hast more wit. Wilt thou not, Jewel? And, by my holiday, the pretty wretch left crying, and said, A. Hey. To see now how a jest shall come about. 
I warrant, and I should live a thousand years, I never should forget it. Wilt thou not, jewel, quoth he, and, pretty fool, it s tinted, and said, a. Lady Capulet, enough of this, I pray thee hold thy peace. Nurse, yes, madam, yet I cannot choose but laugh, to think it should leave crying, and say, a, eh. and yet I warrant it had upon it brow a bump as big as a young cockerel's stone, a perilous knock, and it cried bitterly. Yea, quoth my husband, Falst upon thy face. Thou wilt fall backward when thou comest to age. Wilt thou not, jewel? It s tinted, and said, A. Hey. Juliet, and stint thou too, I pray thee, nurse, say I. Nurse. Peace, I have done. God mark thee to his grace thou wast the prettiest babe that e'er I nursed. And I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Lady Capulet. Marry, that marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? Juliet, it is an honor that I dream not of. Nurse, an honor. Were not I thine only nurse, I would say thou hadst sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Lady Capulet, well, think of marriage now, younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem, are made already mothers. By my count I was your mother much upon these years that you are now a maid. Thus, then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. Nurse. A man. Young lady. Lady. Such a man as all the world why he's a man of wax. Lady Capulet. Verona's summer hath not such a flower. Nurse. Nay. He's a flower. In faith a very flower. Lady Capulet. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? This night you shall behold him at our feast. Read though er the volume of young Paris face and find delight writ there with beauty's pen. Examine every married lineament, and see how one another lends content, and what obscured in this fair volume lies, find written in the margin of his eyes. This precious book of love, this unbound lover, to beautify him, only lacks a cover, the fish lives in the sea, and, tis much pride for fair without the fair within to hide. That book in many's eyes doth share the glory, that in gold clasps locks in the golden story, so shall you share all that he doth possess, by having him.
making yourself no less nurse no less nay bigger women grow by men lady capulet speak briefly can you like of paris love juliet i'll look to like if looking liking move but no more deep will i end out mine eye than your consent give strength to make it fly enter a servant servant madam the guests are come supper served up you called my young lady asked for the nurse cursed in the pantry and everything in extremity i must hence to wait i beseech you follow straight lady capulet we follow thee exit servant Juliet, the county stays. Nurse, go, girl, seek happy nights to happy days. Exeunt. Scene four. A street. Enter Romeo. Mercutio, Benvolio, with five or six maskers, torchbearers and others. Romeo. What? Shall this speech be spoke for our excuse? Or shall we on without apology? B E N V O L I O. The date is out of such prolixity. We'll have no Cupid hoodwinked with a scarf. Bearing a Tartar's painted bow of lath. Scaring the ladies like a crow keeper. Nor no without book prologue. Faintly spoke after the prompter. For our entrance. But let them measure us by what they will. We'll measure them a measure and be gone. Romeo. Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy I will bear the light. Mercutio. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Romeo. Not I. Believe me. You have dancing shoes, with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead so stakes me to the ground I cannot move. Mercutio. You are a lover, borrow Cupid's wings, and soar with them above a common bound. Romeo. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with his light feathers. And so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. Under love's heavy burden do I sink. Mercutio. And, to sink in it, should you burden love, too great oppression for a tender thing. Romeo. Is love a tender thing? It is too rough, too rude, too boisterous, and it pricks like thorn. Mercutio. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking, and you beat love down.
Give me a case to put my visage in. Putting on a mask. A visor for a visor. What care I what curious I doth quote deformities. Here are the beetle brows shall blush for me. The envolio. Come, knock and enter. And no sooner in but every man betake him to his legs. Romeo. A torch for me. Let wantons. Light of heart. Tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. For I am proverbed with a grand sire phrase. I'll be a candle holder and look on. The game was ne'er so fair. And I am done. Mercutio. Tut. Duns the mouse. The constable's own word. If thou art done. We'll draw thee from the mire or save your reverence love. Wherein thou stickest up to the ears. Come. We burn daylight. Ho. Romeo. Nay. That's not so. Mercutio. I mean sir. In delay we waste our lights in vain, light lights by day. Take our good meaning, for our judgment sits five times in that air once in our five wits. Romeo. And we mean well in going to this mask, but, tis no wit to go. Mercutio. Why? May one ask. Romeo. I dreamt a dream tonight. Mercutio. And so did I. Romeo. Well what was yours? Mercutio. That dreamers often lie. Romeo. In bed asleep, while they do dream things true. Mercutio. Oh, then, I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife. And she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman. Drawn with a team of little atomies over men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagon spokes made of long spinner's legs. The cover of the wings of grasshoppers. Her traces of the smallest spider's web. The collars of the moonshine's watery beams. Her whip of cricket's bone. The lash. Of film, her wagoner, a small grey-coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or old grub. Time out o' oh mind the fairies' coachmakers. And in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains. And then they dream of love. O'er oh, courtier's knees. That dream on curtsies straight. O'er oh, lawyer's fingers. His straight dream on fees. O'er oh, lady's lips. His straight on kisses dream. Which oft the angry mab with blisters plagues. Because their breaths with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops o'er a courtier's nose. And then dreams he of smelling out a suit.
and sometime comes she with a tithe pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose as a lies asleep, then dreams he of another benefice. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breeches, ambuscados, Spanish blades, of health's five fathom deep, and then anon drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes, and, being thus frighted, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very mab that plats the manes of horses in the night, and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs, which, once untangled, much misfortune bodes. This is the hag, when maids lie on their backs, that presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Romeo. Peace, peace. Mercutio. Peace, thou talkst of nothing. Mercutio. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain. The god of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin of substance as the air, and more inconstant than the wind, who woos even now the frozen bosom of the north, and, being aged, puffs away from thence, turning his side to the dew dropping south. B -E -N -V -O -L -I -O. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. Romeo. I fear too early, for my mind misgives some consequence yet hanging in the stars. Shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels, and expire the term of a despised life. Closed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he that hath the steerage of my course direct my suit. On. Lusty gentleman. B -E -N -V -O -L -I -O. Strike. Drum. Exeunt. Scene 5. A hall in Capulet's house. Musicians waiting. Enter servants. First servant. Where's Potpan? That he helps not to take away. He shift a trencher. He scrape a trencher. Second servant. When good manners shall lie all in one or two men's hands, and they unwashed too, tis a foul thing. First servant. Away with the join stools, remove the court cupboard, look to the plate. Good thou, save me a piece of march pain, and as thou loves me, let the porter let in Susan Grindstone and Nell. Antony and Potpan Second servant. A. Boy. Ready. First servant. 
you are looked for and called for, asked for and sought for, in the great chamber. Second servant. We cannot be here and there too. Cheerly, boys. Be brisk a while, and the longer live I take all. Exeunt. Enter Capulet, and see. With the guests and gentlewomen to the maskers. Capulet. Welcome, gentlemen. Ladies that have their toes unplagued with corns will have a bout with you. Are my mistresses. Which of you all will now deny to dance? She that makes dainty, she I'll swear hath corns. Am I come near ye now? Welcome, gentlemen. I have seen the day that I have worn a visor, and could tell a whispering tale in a fair lady's ear, such as would please. Tis gone. Tis gone, tis gone, you are welcome, gentlemen. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall, give room. And foot it, girls. Music plays, and they dance. More light, you knaves, and turn the tables up, and quench the fire, the room is grown too hot. Ah sirrah, this unlooked for sport comes well. Nay sit, nay sit, good cousin Capulet, for you and I are past our dancing days. How long is now since last yourself and I were in a mask? Capulet's cousin. By lady, thirty years. Capulet. What, man, tis not so much, tis not so much. Tis since the nuptial of Lucentio. Come Pentecost as quickly as it will. Some five and twenty years. And then we masked. Capulet's cousin. Tis more. Tis more. His son is elder. Sir. His son is thirty. Capulet. Will you tell me that? His son was but a ward two years ago. Romeo. What lady is that? Which doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? Servant. I know not, sir. Romeo. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night as a rich jewel in an Ethiop's ear. Beauty too rich for use. For earth too dear. So shows a snowy dove trooping with crows as yonder lady o'er her fellows shows. The measure done, I'll watch her place of stand, and touching hers, make blessed my rude hand. Did my heart love till now? 
forswear it. Sight. For I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. Tybalt. This by his voice, should be a Montague. Fetch me my rapier, boy. What? Dares the slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now by the stock and honor of my kin, to strike him dead I hold it not a sin. Capulet. Why how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Tybalt, uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that is hither come in spite, to scorn at our solemnity this night. Capulet, young Romeo, is it? Tybalt, tis he. That villain Romeo. Capulet. Content thee. Gentle cause. Let him alone. Abears him like a portly gentleman. And. To say truth. Verona brags of him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house to him disparagement. Therefore be patient. Take no note of him. It is my will, the which if thou respect. Show a fair presence and put off these frowns. An ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. Tybalt. It fits when such a villain is a guest. I'll not endure him. Capulet. He shall be endured. What? Goodman boy. I say he shall. Go to. Am I the master here? Or you? Go to. You'll not endure him. God shall mend my soul. You'll make a mutiny among my guests. You will set cock a hoop. You'll be the man. Tybalt. Why, uncle, tis a shame. Capulet. Go to. Go to. You are a saucy boy. Ist so. Indeed. This trick may chance to scathe you. I know what. You must contrary me. Marry. Tis time. Well said. My hearts. You are a princox. Go. Be quiet. Or more light. More light. For shame. I'll make you quiet. What? Cheerly, my hearts. Tybalt. Patience perforce with willful collar meeting makes my flesh tremble in the different greeting. I will withdraw. But this intrusion shall, now seeming sweet, convert to bitter gall. Exit. Romeo. 
Dr. Juliet. If I profane with my unworthiest hand this holy shrine, the gentle sin is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Juliet. Good pilgrim. You do wrong your hand too much. Which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch. And palm to palm is holy palmer's kiss. Romeo. Have not saints' lips, and holy palmer's too. Juliet. A. Pilgrim. Lips that they must use in prayer. Romeo. Oh. Then. Dear Saint. Let lips do what hands do. They pray. Grant thou. Lest faith turn to despair. Juliet. Saints do not move. Though grant for prayer's sake. Romeo. Then move not while my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips, by thine my sin is purged. Kissing her. Juliet. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Romeo. Sin from my lips. O oh, trespass sweetly urged. Give me my sin again. Juliet. You kiss by the book. Nurse. Madam. Your mother craves a word with you. Romeo. What is her mother? Nurse. Mary. Bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. And a good lady. And a wise and virtuous. I nursed her daughter that you talked with all. I tell you. He that can lay hold of her shall have the chinks. Romeo. Is she a Capulet? Oh dear account. My life is my foe's debt. B-E-N-V-O-L-I-O. -O. Away. Be gone. The sport is at the best. Romeo. A. Sir I fear. The more is my unrest. Capulet. Nay. Gentlemen. Prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling foolish banquet towards. Is it e'en so? Why then? I thank you all. I thank you. Honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on then. Let's to bed. Ah. Sirrah. By my fay. It waxes late. I'll to my rest. Exeunt all but Juliet and Nurse. Juliet. Come hither, Nurse. What is yond gentleman? Nurse. The son and heir of old Tiberio. Juliet. 
What's he that now is going out of door? Nurse. Marry. That I think be young Petruchio. Juliet. What's he that follows here, that would not dance? Nurse. I know not. Juliet. Go ask his name. If he be married, my grave is like to be my wedding bed. Nurse. His name is Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your great enemy. Juliet. My only love sprung from my only hate. Too early seen unknown, and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me, that I must love a loathed enemy. Nurse. What's this? What's this? Juliet. A rhyme I learned even now of one I danced with all. One calls within. Juliet. Nurse. Anon. Anon. Come let's away. The strangers all are gone. Excellent.